Well, it looks like President Trump's commitment to hold the border and fortify it is working. People who have been trying to cross over have been apprehended. And um, this morning in the Tijuana, um, San Isidro border crossing, the busiest one in the United States, perhaps the world, um, they, they closed it off completely coming into the U.S. because the Border Patrol got word that illegals in that caravan were going to try to come in and force their way in, so they just shut it all down for a few hours back open now. Uh, we're rejoined by Barry Nussbaum of the American Truth Project, sharing his thoughts on the caravan. You know, Barry, I have a source, too, that has confirmed that people in this caravan who have arrived at the border and are in some of these, these tents and these, these, these areas where they've said, here's where you can go, uh, scabies, Zika virus and tuberculosis. Uh, there's a lot of illness, and what scares me more, Amy, are uh, the violent offenders that would never be allowed into the United States. These aren't asylum seeker seekers, these are criminals. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the people that come into the United States and commit murder and get deported, and commit robbery and get deported, and rape women and get deported. Um, I don't think there's any question that the vast majority of America uh, feels very strongly that a sovereign nation's prime responsibility is to protect and defend its borders. And if the borders come down, you're no longer an independent nation. These people have been sent here with money coming from outside sources that makes me very, very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And it should distress your viewers equally, especially the ones like you, near the San Diego border in San Ysidro. Yeah, a lot of people were in doubt about them. And, and, and you know, shame on the people who try to cry racism and say racism is why uh, Trump wants to fortify the border and why some Americans don't want the illegals here. You have hundreds and hundreds of people in Mexico protesting that caravan being there because they're, they're simply overwhelmed. And it's going to cost them, um, Tijuana specifically, like $4 million if they hope to actually help these people with shelter, housing, clothing, protection. And they, there's no way to get it but from the federal government. And the federal government, I'm sure, doesn't have it. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's a whole thing. But what do you see happening next? I think Trump is going to stand by his word. I think he's right. I think he's got the support of the majority of the country. I, I quite frankly am, am distressed that any patriotic American citizen, uh, Amy, would actually say, let them in. Those are the people that want to let them in based on the fact that they're all going to be registered to vote in the Democratic Party, even though they're not going to be citizens. They are citizens of another nation. We have rules. We have laws. Let's enforce them. And uh, unless the Congress sits down and makes a big change to our immigration status and uh, immigration processes, uh, Trump is right, and he's going to keep them out. And I think he's right to do so. Far, far overdue, caravan or not. In October alone, there were over 50,000 people apprehended at um, just one border crossing in Texas. And so it's, it, it, again, as you said, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, wanted to also chat about some other <laughs> trending news. Um, the recount in Florida is over. I'm actually surprised they, they got it done this quickly with all the back and forth. You watch the news. I mean, the judge lectured uh, this gal, Brenda Snipes, who's been called out by previous courts for being in violation of state law losing ballots, giving wrong directions. Right, you know, they did, just as recently as 2016. Yeah, exactly. He, he said, we're, the judge actually said, we're the laughing stock of the world because of Florida on our vote recount. How is it possible when, I mean, I'm not normally a conspiratorial type of guy, but after all the warning on the first recount, they had a certain deadline and she announced that the results are ready and they're gonna be announced and that the Republican, Scott, had gained about 700 votes, and then they didn't upload the numbers until two minutes after the deadline, knowing that those results would not be used. And it was like, oh, sorry about that. We'll just throw those ballots out, which, under state law, they did. <laughs> uh, I know. <laughs> thank goodness she finally resigned today. I hope she goes away and retires and we never hear her name again.
I couldn't believe she resigned. And you think, how many counties are there in the United States? Everyone else got it done. And, you know, again, they lied behind two minutes for their, their when they were supposed to upload them. And they said they weren't familiar with the website. Well, all shocks. So anyway, in the governor's race, again, DeSantis beat Gillum. And then Rick Scott beat Bill Nelson in the Senate. So that is it with that. And we have an observant Muslim um, trying to do some changes in Congress, too. You wanted to chat about that? Yeah, this is really curious. Um, in the history of the Congress, it, there's been a tradition and a rule that's always been enforced that there are no head coverings. Mm -hmm. um, it's an inequality thing. And this gal Omar from Minnesota got elected. She's an observant Somali Muslim who may be here under um, false immigration status. There's a lot of uh, information. She might have actually married her brother for a time in order to get um, residency status. She was elected from a uh, very heavily Muslim district. And right, now is anyone looking into that, Barry? Is anyone talking about that besides the non-mainstream media? I, I, I'm curious about that same question because yeah. this is the same state uh, that just elected uh, as Attorney General um, the most famous um, Muslim ex-member of Congress, Keith Ellison, who <laughs> Uh, beat up his girlfriend so badly she was in the emergency room with bruises that looked horrific. And get this, he got 70 plus percent of the vote Ugh. with police records and hospital records that show he beat the heck out of her. What is that, so just about, name recognition? They recognized his name, so I'll vote for him. Well, he's the Muslim and, and that's a Muslim neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that's what happened. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the question you asked me previously about I'd like to respond to, Going all the way back to Thomas Jefferson, um, the signer and the drafter of the Declaration of Independence, he said that when people want to become American citizens, they have to make a choice uh, either to be American or to be observant Muslims because you can't be both. And his concern was that the Quran, which is the holy book of the religion, says that that takes precedent over the country's rules where you are, meaning things like equality, things like democracy, women's rights, uh, slavery, um, killing your enemies, and so on, are all legal in the Quran, but not legal under the Constitution. And the question, Amy, is what's gonna happen when she comes to Congress? As an example, she made campaign promises that she was against BDS and would be uh, open-minded on Israel. The day she got elected, she goes, oh, never mind, I'm a big supporter of BDS and I'm going to work hard against Israel. The very day. Uh, I'm sad to hear that and uh, I hope the, the voters that elected her pay close attention to her for the next two years. Mm. Uh, about 30 seconds but wanted to ask you about Jim Acosta who loves to be in the news, loves to be his own headline and uh, he got his press credentials back but it might be for a short time. Well, President Trump said yesterday on Fox News that if he misbehaves, he's out again. <laughs> and a lot of press supports him being out because he hogs the microphone and they don't get to ask questions. I, you know what I would do if I was President Trump? Put him in the back of the room and just don't call on him. Let him yell out all he wants and just ignore him. And his 30 minutes of fame is over. <laughs> Barry Newsbaum, The American Truth Project. You can find it at americantruthproject.org or findbarry.com.